Hi, I'm Jean Laird and I'm a dietetic in intern at the Riverside Diabetes Wellness Center. And tonight I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of the grocery store. We're going to look at some selected items and compare food labels and decide which are the healthier food choices and maybe which ones are not so healthy. So come on, let's go inside and we'll take a look at our first item. You may have heard it said that it's good to shop and purchase most of your grocery items from the perimeter of the store, and that's true. You want most of your items to come from the produce section, brightly colored fruits and vegetables, deep greens of broccoli, dark leafy greens, and a variety of multicolored vegetables and fruits. Um, healthy lean meats and low fat dairy. It's good to shop the perimeter of the store and get real food in your shopping cart. When you shop the aisles, you tend to uh, end up with a lot more processed food. Uh, processed food can be a little scary. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of items tonight, but as a rule of thumb, try to have the majority of your food from the perimeter of the store. the rich gorgeous color of this red cabbage or the dark rich leafy greens or the reds of tomatoes and the beautiful blue of blueberries. The, the brightly colored produce is what you want to kind of gravitate towards because these are rich in antioxidants. The pigments that make up this color are also extremely protective for your own cells. They protect your cells from cellular damage due to um, harmful molecules that roam through your bloodstream and when you eat a lot of foods that are high in antioxidants, it also helps to slow down the aging process. Um, so make sure that you're eating a variety of colors. There used to be a slogan out a while ago that was, uh, it was eat your colors or eat the colors of the rainbow. When you have a variety of colors in your diet, it ensures that not only you're getting all the nutrients you need, but you're also getting a rich supply of these antioxidants that are found in these wonderful fruits and vegetables. be using to add flavor to your food. Not necessarily more salt, but more dried herbs, spices, wonderful flavorings that are not going to add sodium or calories, but they're going to add in a wide array of wonderful flavorings. And um, when you add some hot peppers, that gives your food a little bit of a pop, actually kicks up your metabolism for a while as well. So make sure you visit the, the herbs, the spices, and the dried pepper aisle and try to be adventurous again and sample some of these in your cooking. I think you'll be very pleased with um, some of the flavors you're able to come up with. Okay, we're going to take a look at some cereals and when we're talking cereal we're already talking about a very carby meal. So you have to decide do I want to spend uh, all my carb dollars on the cereal or do I want to go a little bit lower carb, higher protein. So let's take a look at a couple of the cereals that I found were I consider to be good picks. Um, original Special K, uh, this one you get a one cup serving. You're only spending 23 grams of carbs on it, which leaves you a lot of carbs left over for maybe a piece of toast or a piece of fruit and some milk. You're getting six grams of protein, which is very decent, um, and no fat. So Special K Original is a good choice. Also, if you're interested in a little bit higher protein, Special K Protein, um, this one, again, while you're only getting a three-quarter cup serving, you're getting 19 grams of carbs. You're getting 10 grams of protein. That's a very nice amount of protein with three grams of fiber uh, at 120 calories. So um, less carbs, more protein, but you're only getting a three-quarter cup with that. You could kick it up to a cup and spend a little bit more on the carbs, but you'd still have plenty left over if you wanted to have something else with your breakfast. Um, there are a lot of cereals that, for example, things like muesli or great grains, um, cereals that are similar to this one, where they're very hearty cereals. Another one is the Special K Nourish. Okay, these are hearty cereals. They've got nuts, they've got seeds, they've got a variety of grains. Um, the only thing is you're going to spend all of your carbohydrates on the bowl of cereal. Um, this particular cereal is one cup serving. 
and you're, you're going to spend 40 grams of your carbs for breakfast on this bowl of cereal. Now, that might be okay with you. That might be all you want for breakfast with a little bit of milk. You're going to get 5 grams of protein and a really good amount of fiber, 5 grams. Um, there are a lot of cereals out there like this. There's this type, there's the great grains, there's muesli, and there's a lot of other ones. So you have to decide, do I want to spend all my carb dollars on the one bowl of cereal, or do I want to maybe go a little bit lower carb and have some carbs left over for um, toast or fruit or milk or juice. Um, if that's the case, your best picks that I found are basically just your plain Cheerios. Okay, Cheerios is going to give you a one cup serving and only 100 calories and you're only giving up 20 grams of protein you're still getting 3 grams of fiber and 3 grams of protein so you're really not sacrificing a lot in terms of protein or fiber but you're not spending a lot on the carb count either another good one that you might want to consider is Kix I like it because there's no artificial sweeteners, there's no artificial colors uh, no high fructose corn syrup and the other nice thing about it is you get one and a quarter cups as a serving. You're spending only 25 grams of carbs, still plenty left over, three grams of fiber. Uh, you are sacrificing a little bit of protein though, only two grams. So if you were to have this and you wanted to make sure you're getting protein with your meal, you might want to include a, a little bit of low fat sausage or um, something along those lines, uh, maybe an egg to increase your protein with this particular meal. So you have to decide what you would like to do in terms of um, your breakfast. If you're a cereal eater, um, decide if you're going to give up all your carbs on that one bowl or if you want to have carbs left over um, to have maybe some additional items included in your breakfast. Hi, we're over by the bacon section, and I want to take a look at some of the different types of bacon to see if turkey bacon is really that much better than regular. Um, what about low sodium bacon? So let's take a look. I have a package of Dutch Farms regular bacon, and if we look at the nutrition facts label, two slices equals a serving, 80 calories, seven grams of fat with two and a half of those saturated, we get uh, 290 milligrams of sodium, which is a lot for just two slices of bacon, at, and also four grams of protein. So let's compare and look at some turkey bacon to see if there's a big difference. I have some Jenny O turkey bacon, and they're showing that one slice is a serving, so we have to double all these amounts to make sure that we're on fair playing ground. Um, so two slices would be 60 calories, a little bit less, Two slices would equal one gram of saturated fat, so we're down on that count too, down by one and a half grams. And 260 milligrams of sodium. We're only saving 30 milligrams of sodium by going with the turkey bacon. Uh, four grams of protein, about the same as the other one. What about, uh, let's take a look at the regular low sodium bacon to see if it's any better. So this is a low sodium bacon by Signature Farms, and if we look at the nutrition facts label, two slices equals 80 calories, the same as regular, two and a half grams of saturated fat, same as before, but we're only getting 160 milligrams of sodium. That's 130 milligrams savings from regular bacon. Uh, and we're getting more protein. We're getting five grams of protein as opposed to four. So. Unless you're somebody that eats a lot of bacon, probably having just the regular bacon once in a while is fine. Um, if you are somebody that has hypertension or you eat bacon, bacon frequently, I would recommend going with the regular low sodium bacon over uh, regular bacon and also over turkey bacon. Um, why not have the real thing, just go a little bit lower in sodium. types of yogurt. Yogurt is generally thought of as a healthy food, and it can be, but there's certain picks that are better than others. Um, after going over some of the different yogurts, my favorites were, my number one choice actually was Oikos Triple Zero. Let me show you why. It has only 120 calories. It has 
15 grams of protein, which is a really good amount, 6 grams of fiber, and only 14 grams of carbohydrates. That's only one serving of carbs um, for the serving of a 5.3 ounce serving of yogurt. The other thing I like about this one is that there's five strains of bacteria. Some of the other yogurts only contain three, some only two. Um, the more strains, the better. This does not have any artificial sweeteners. It's low carb. It uses stevia in place of sugar. Uh, this is definitely your best pick when it comes to yogurt. It's Oikos Triple Zero. Another one that I found that I like is Chobani. This one is Chobani. Blood orange on the bottom, but they also have blueberry on the bottom and other flavors. Again, it's only 120 calories. It's only 17 grams of carbs, 12 grams of protein, which is good. No fat. And the other thing I like about this is it indicates that it's non-GMO. Okay, um, That gives me peace of mind to know that the ingredients in this product were not genetically modified. So this is also a really good pick. Chibani, fruit on the bottom. Um, and I'm Some of the ones I did about, and I'll just give you a little tip. If it has a name that sounds like a dessert, it's going to be higher in carbohydrate, it's going to be higher in fat. This one has 150 calories, it has more fat, four and a half grams, three of them are saturated, 11 grams of protein. You still have only 15 grams of carbs, which is good, but you're getting a lot more fat and a lot more calories. Um, so just be careful that when you're taking uh, picking out any type of a yogurt that's got a name that sounds like a dessert, it's going to be higher in fat, sometimes higher in carbs, and um, also higher in calories. Okay, and that holds true for the Chibani Key Lime Pie. And here's another one that you might want to take a look at. Oikos Crunch Chocolate Caramel Pretzel. Okay, you're just adding a few little grains up on top, but by adding those, you're increasing the calories by 100, you're getting 170, 50 more calories than the Oikos Triple, triple Zero. You're only getting 11 grams of protein. You're getting 28 grams of carbs. That's almost two servings of carbohydrates. Um, it's almost double what some of the other yogurts have. You're also getting fat and saturated fat and a little bit more sodium. Um, are these little nuggets on the top worth it? I don't think so. So I would steer away from these if I were you. Another reason I'm more of a fan of Greek yogurt than regular yogurt is if you look at regular yogurt, you're getting more calories, 140 calories. You're getting more carbs, 25. You're getting a lot less protein. And you're getting a little bit of fat mixed in there. And with this one, it only tells you live active cultures, but it doesn't tell you which ones. Okay? If we look at Yoplait, even Yoplait Light, yes, we're getting less calories. And we are getting, um, along with the, lo the lower amount of calories, you're getting a lot less protein. And you're still getting a whole serving of carbs. So you're, you're not saving on carbs by going with the light over going with the Oikos Triple Zero or the Chibani. You're still getting about the same amount of carbohydrates. The other thing that I don't like about this is it has sugar as an ingredient, but it also has artificial sweeteners, sucralose and acesulfame potassium. Either give me artificial sweeteners with no sugar or give me sugar without the artificial sweeteners. But don't put both in there because then you're getting the worst of both worlds. So watch for that. If you're going to go with something that's got artificial sweeteners, why are they adding the sugar then to kick up the carbohydrate count? If you're going to go with something that has sugar, then skip the artificial sweeteners. We're over here by the milk substitutes, and we have things like coconut milk, almond milk, cashew milk, soy milk. Um, I wanted to compare some of the different types of almond milk because there's about five different varieties. Six if you include the chocolate uh, type. So let's take a look at some of these labels to see which ones are the lowest in carbs, calories, and uh, how much protein they each contain. If you look over here, we've got the vanilla, just regular vanilla. One cup is 90 calories. We're getting 16 grams of carbs, that's one serving of carbs, and one gram of protein. Um, 
pretty low on fat, so we don't really have to worry about that. The light vanilla cuts the calories down to 60. Again, lower in fat, and we're only getting 11 grams of carbs, but less than one gram of protein. If we go to the original almond milk, we're still getting 60 calories, low fat, only eight grams of carbohydrate, and one gram of protein. I like this one over the light vanilla. Over here, the light original, again, they're cutting off calories, 40, we're getting only five grams of carbohydrate. You could actually have a cup and a half to uh, two cups and still you know, be pretty low in your carbohydrate count there. And the only problem here is you're getting less than one gram of protein. But for five grams of carbs, that's not bad. You could actually, like I said, have two cups of this and still only be getting 10 carbohydrates. So that's pretty good. The last one I want to look at over here is unsweetened almond milk. This one is the lowest in everything. 30 calories, uh, again, low fat. 30, I'm sorry, what, less than one gram of carbohydrate, less than one gram, and you're getting one full gram of protein. So this one sounds like it's almost like drinking water. You probably have as much as you want and not have to worry about it with such a low calorie count and such a low carbohydrate count. Uh, so th I think your best bets here are either the light original or the unsweetened. Another thing I like about this brand, which is Silk, is that it's not genetically modified. So whenever I see this on the label, I tend to choose these types of products because I feel better about not having anything genetically modified in my food. I believe this one is organic. No, it's not organic. Um, the time that you need to probably, in particular, buy organic is if you're having soy milk. Um, if you don't, if you're allergic to nuts and you want to have a substitute for dairy, um, soy is an option, and the amounts in the soy are pretty comparable to the almond milk. Um, but I would buy soy organic. I'd make sure that the, any type of soy milk I'm buying is organic, and, and you can usually find that pretty easily. Coconut milk is going to be higher in calories, higher in fat than the other two, and cashew milk is pretty comparable to the to the almond milk. But you got some nice variety there as far as choosing. Um, alternate uh, beverages uh, besides dairy. We're over here by the frozen foods and I took a look at some of the frozen dinners to see if there's any uh, better picks over others and what I found is I mean overall whenever you're talking about frozen dinners you're, you're pretty much um, you just expect to have a high sodium count. Um, some of them had more protein than others. Some of them were a little bit lower carb. Um, so let's take a look at just a couple that I thought were worth mentioning. Um, what I found was you can you actually can find some gluten-free options. This one is only 200 calories, but you're getting 580 milligrams of sodium. And I found that most of these dinners contain somewhere between five and 600 milligrams. Um, 17 grams of, of protein, which isn't bad. And this one's only 25 grams of carbs, so you'd still have some carbohydrate left over uh, to add some, some different items to the meal. But this is a very small package. I don't know too many people that this would fill up. You're not getting a whole lot here. Um, this is a Healthy Choice Cafe Steamers. And these are, again, lower carb, 29 grams. 18 grams of protein, but again, 550 milligrams of sodium um, at 250 calories. A little bit more hearty. Serving size is a little bit bigger than the other one. This might fill you up better than the former um, one we mentioned. Right. Let's take a look at another one. We're going to look at Smart Ones by Weight Watchers. Okay, this one's mini rigatoni with vodka cream sauce. And calories aren't bad, 270. Five grams of fat, only two are saturated. That's really good. Um, cholesterol is also low at 10 mill milligrams. And sodium isn't as bad as some of the other ones either, 500 milligrams. Uh, this one has 42 grams of carbs. Now, if you're only allowed 40 to 50, that's pretty much going to eat up most of what you're allowed. I like the seven grams of fiber. I don't like it's only got 12 grams of protein. I'd like to see the protein a little bit higher. 
So let's take a look at one other one by Smart Ones. This one is three cheese ziti with meatballs. Okay. And 320 calories. Um, four and a half grams of saturated fat, more than double the other one, 23% of what's recommended. So keep an eye on that. The sodium in this one is 690 milligrams. That's really high, and this is not a very big serving. Okay, you're getting only 320 calories, and in 320 calories, you're getting almost 700 milligrams of sodium. That's more than half the day's recommendation. 14 grams of protein, um, that's better than the other one, and this one's got 6 grams of fiber. But again, 43 grams of carbs, so that takes up a lot of the carbs that you're allowed for the day. Um, that's a, I'm sorry, that's actually close to a third of what you're allowed per day for sodium. So this is one that I actually really liked. This is Smart Made, and this would probably be, be my recommendation. Smart Made by Smart Ones. Um, First of all, the portions look a little bit bigger, and there's 260 calories, not bad at all. Um, two and a half grams of saturated fat, not bad. That's more heart friendly. Um, one and a half are, sat are mono unsaturated, that's even more heart friendly. And we're at 530 milligrams of sodium, not as bad as some of them, so not too bad. 33 grams of carbs, so now you have a little bit of room to add some extra carbohydrate in the, in the form of maybe a piece of fruit or a vegetable to go along with that. Six grams of fiber and it's got a nice amount of protein, 21 grams. So I really like this one, Smart Made. Um, the other Smart Maids were very similar. Uh, this one again is the roasted turkey and vegetables. Uh, this one was, again, calories not bad, 240. One gram of saturated fat, that's excellent. A little bit of mono in there. Um, sodium a tad bit higher. Um, 36 grams of carbs, so you still have room to add to that. Fiber could be higher, but 20 grams of protein. So my, I would have to say, um, my, the one that I feel is the best pick would have to be the Smart Made. Okay, that one actually had the best amount of carbohydrates, protein, um, saturated fat. Um, Lean Cuisine Comfort Grilled Chicken Caesar. This one, I I like the calorie amount, low in saturated fat. Um, again, only 550 milligrams of sodium. 25 grams of carbs, so you've got lots of room to add some healthy sides to that. Um, three grams of fiber, and it's got 18 grams of protein, which isn't bad. So that was another good pick, Lean Cuisine Comfort. Okay. So in general, if you're going to eat frozen foods, I recommend having um, something that's higher protein, a little bit lower carb. Watch the saturated fat and really try to keep around or below 500 milligrams per sodium. Try to watch for, um, try to choose frozen foods that are maybe under 400 calories. And I would steer away from anything that's uh, like a heavy cheese sauce or a heavy cream sauce because right off the bat you're going to be getting more sodium, more fat, more saturated fat, and more cholesterol. Um, so I would keep it simple and steer away from anything in a heavy sauce. You really want to watch um, when you're picking frozen foods, you want to watch the sodium, carbs, the protein, the saturated fat, and calories. Um, in particular, carbohydrates and the sodium and saturated fat. You want to pick meals that are going to be um, heart healthy. Um, in general, it's a lot better to go for frozen foods than it is for fast foods, but just read labels and try to pay attention to some of the healthier frozen food options out there. I don't want to fail to mention that when you're choosing frozen meals, um, the reason why you want to go lower carb, lower calorie, is because you want to supplement those meals if you can with some healthy sides, maybe some fruit, uh, maybe a piece of whole grain uh, bread, or um, especially maybe some vegetables from the free list, like a nice healthy salad or uh, some broccoli. So don't forget to add to your frozen dinners if you especially if you know it's not going to fill you up, add some healthy sides and particularly from the free list of dark green leafy vegetables and um, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, and cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, things like that.
Uh, I've looked at several different varieties of soup, and I have to tell you that I, I really didn't find anything that I was happy with. Um, I have a Campbell's New England clam chowder. Uh, if you look here, it's got two and a half servings, and each serving is only a half a cup. So that's not really going to fill up too many people. You're going to probably want at least two servings. But in a half a cup of this particular uh, soup, there are 790 milligrams of sodium. So if you were to have the whole can as your meal, you'd be getting 1,975 milligrams of sodium just in that one particular meal. The protein is low. Carbs are not bad, of course. Um, but again, that's only a half a cup. So if you had two servings at a cup, you're getting about um, two servings or uh, 28 grams of carbohydrate. I uh, was very dismayed um, when I looked at some of these labels. Another one, this one was probably the best one that I found, Healthy Choice. It doesn't say low sodium, uh, but no artificial colors or flavors, so I like that. Calorie isn't too bad, but keep in mind that they give you a serving size of one cup and there's two servings in here. So watch the serving size. Um, you're best off just having the one cup because one cup is, um, in this one, only 390 milligrams of sodium. Uh, that's pretty decent. Still 15 grams of carbs and a little bit more protein, 5 grams. Uh, low in saturated fat. This was probably the best one I found was the healthy choice. I looked for some low sodium varieties. Uh, Progresso, reduced sodium. And it says one cup is a serving and there's two in this uh, can. In one serving, 480 milligrams of sodium. Um, again, not too bad, but you know, if you don't stop at one serving, you're getting, you know, about 900, over 900 milligrams of sodium. Um, carbohydrates a little bit higher, 23, and the protein again is low. But this one at least has four grams of fiber. So watch the serving size, um, and you know, keep in mind the sodium. It seems like with a lot of these foods we're looking at, sodium is the problem. You can find lower carb, you can find higher protein, you can even find lower fat, but so many of them have an enormous amount of sodium. And this is a reduced sodium uh, soup. I have another reduced sodium uh, by Signature Kitchen, and it contains two and a half servings, each one only half a cup again. So if you had this whole jar, uh, this whole can, which isn't very big, you'd be getting over 1,200 milligrams of sodium. 10 grams of carbs, that's fairly low, but you'd be getting 25 if you had the whole can. Again, that's not too bad. Still leaves you some leftover for other uh, food items. Uh, pretty low protein, though, and no fiber. So even though reduced sodium, I still wasn't happy with that amount of sodium in only a half a cup. I noticed that if we look at the light brands, they skim off on, um, on calories, but they're still high sodium, uh, low protein, and about the same amount of carbs. Um, my advice to you would be to make it yourself at home. And that way you can control all the ingredients, all the sodium, everything you put um, into it. When we're talking about different buttery spreads, my favorites uh, that I think are the most heart healthy are, uh, one of them is Brummel and Brown. It's made with yogurt and it only has 1.5 grams of saturated fat per serving with only 45 calories. The serving is a tablespoon. Okay, Brummel and Brown is a good pick. It is non-hydrogenated, so it does not have trans fat. Uh, also, I'm really fond of the Smart Balance, and there's several varieties. You can get Smart Balance Light. Uh, it even says right on here, non-GMO, as omega threes. This is an excellent pick. Uh, another one you might want to consider is just the regular one or the one with flaxseed. Um, there's also a variety that has olive oil in it. So these are actually a great choice, the Smart Balance. And the other thing I like about it is you're not getting a lot of saturated fat. Um, here, once again, you're only getting 1.5 grams of saturated fat in a tablespoon. Um, you are 
getting either some omega-3s or some monounsaturated if you go with the one that contains olive oil. Uh, but this is a really good thing. If you go with regular margarine, you're getting trans fat. If you go with butter, you're getting a lot of saturated fat. So you want to be aware of the different types of fats that you choose to work with. Some of them are heart healthy, some of them are not. Um, in general, I usually always use olive oil uh, in my cooking. Almost in everything, I use olive oil. Just remember to use it in moderation. It's still a fat, it's still nine calories per gram, so moderation. If you want to cook with, um, and you want that buttery taste, I would sometimes use the olive oil, but then just add a little bit of butter to add the buttery flavor. So keep that in mind. But um, you want to be aware of foods that are going to be conducive to good heart health, um, are you know carb conscious, sodium conscious for blood pressure. These are the things you want to have in mind when you're shopping for different types of foods. Okay. Talked about a lot of things tonight, and there's just a few things I want to emphasize. Um, we need carbohydrates. We don't want to cut those out of our diet. Those are our main source of energy. We just want to be really smart about the carbohydrates that we choose. We want to mainly stick to things that are unrefined, unprocessed, and whole grain. Um, simple carbs, sugary things, um, they can be included in our diet, but at a minimum, should be very moderate on those things. Um, the bulk of our diet should be healthy carbohydrates, things like beans and nuts and seeds, and healthy proteins as well. Um, proteins like fish, especially those high in omega-3s, are good to include in your diet. Uh, that would be things like salmon and herring, halibut, sardines, and tuna. And don't forget that nuts have protein. Um, they're an excellent source of protein, but just go with nuts that are raw, unsalted, and, um, and that also in moderation because those can be high in calories. If you're very wise about the way you choose to eat, um, that's much more conducive to a longer, healthier life. So don't forget about these tips that we've talked about. Don't forget that things like nuts and beans and whole grains are a really nice, rich source of fiber, as are fruits and vegetables. You want to make sure you're getting enough fiber in your diet because that can help control blood sugar, give you a feeling of fullness, and keep your digestive tract healthy and clean. So to wrap it up, I just want to say thank you so much for being with me tonight and allowing me uh, to bring this information to you. And um, you have yourself a nice evening. Bye-bye. more information on healthy meals and tips on nutrition and uh, weight loss, please feel free to look me up on my website, eatsmartfeelgreat.com. Thanks again.